It is sometimes difficult to define normal. It was a normal day where normal people went about their normal business. <laughs> or was it? I don't think so. Normal things didn't fall from the sky. Just ask Icarus or the people of Dresden. That's because this wasn't a normal day. Nor would it be a day that these normal people would ever forget. Some were more frightened than others. This man knew that his world would collapse. In the back of his mind, he had feared this for a long, long time. <laughs> Must have been how David felt when he stood before Goliath. Or how anyone feels when the Grim Reaper turns up at your door, knowing your name. The first rule of thumb is never believe everything you hear. Question it all. In fact, if someone tells you something, don't question what they're saying. Question why they're saying it. The bottom line is no one shares anything unless they want something. History is written by the winners. It is made, created by the ruling class. Money talks and people listen. Democracy can only work if the masses actually pay attention to what goes on. <laughs> Ask them in Germany in the 40s. Ignorance kills. Anyone can be force-fed a line of crap as long as it's candy coated with sugar. For some people, their 15 minutes of fame have turned into 15 years of lies. A constant barrage of verbal pyrotechnics in which the words themselves are as vacuous as the people who speak them. Thank God, actions speak louder than words. Real heroes do exist. But with every hero, there is a counterpart. The alter ego, the living crooked id, when you look into a mirror, what do you see? Is the mirror looking back? Or are you gazing at yourself? Who's really in control? Who looked first? For without a negative, there can be no positive. It is the rule of the universe. Some rules are made to be broken, whereas others, the whole existence of the universe depends on them. Sometimes, there are those that are even willing to forgo all that. But blame should never be pointed only at individuals. Rarely can a single being act without an audience. They both feed on each other. People allow things to go wrong. Tragedies are created by a series of events, not isolated incidents. Titanic didn't sink because it struck an iceberg. It sank because it was made. The whole concept of a bar fly is being able to disappear. Yet, somehow, there are those that won't let you. By nature, people are social animals, some more social than others. Of course, there are those that don't go for the social thing at all. They prefer to break up harmony wherever they can. To them, being social is breaking a few heads. Huh. These people never learn. For when you look for trouble, all you find is trouble.
not necessarily the kind you had in mind. The shame of it all is there is injustice everywhere. Us people are dumber than they look. Reason is what they call a breakfast cereal. It has no place in the lives of most. And then we question why we have attention deficit disorder, learning problems, and a high divorce rate in this country. When will people ever learn? Probably only when it's too late. Fortunately, every possibility is also available in this universe. If there is a chance, then it can happen. If things can change, then they no doubt will. There are places in America that get a bum rap, some justifiably so. And what these reasons are, reasons for everything. There is a reason why pretty girls sell toothpaste. Who's looking at the teeth? How many times have you seen an ad that you pinned to your wall, looked at every day for a week, and yet two months later having a clue what it was selling? Ask anyone, and they all have the same story. Authority also has a way of striking fear in others. Hey, look, no one wants to get caught with their pants down when it happens. The syndrome called tunnel vision sets in. It also adds to the fact that people generally fear what they don't understand. And that, in return, goes back to my previous comment about normal people. Normal people fear things that are not normal. You want to call it abnormal? You want to call it different? Well, depends on which side of the fence you're sitting on, I guess. for the rhetoric. Let's get to the real game. He waited hours for this moment to occur. Everyone was on high alert. You could smell the tension in the air. He was a sitting duck out there and he knew it. Huh. I've been in that situation before many times. It's not fun. As long as no one panics, the deal should be straightforward. First off, the buyer has to like the package. The foundation of capitalism is buyers and sellers. The price is dictated by demand. In some transactions, there are no guarantees, so you have to bring your own. He you planned for moments like this. But he didn't plan for everything. Huh, who could? 
No one expects blinding hot death to rain down on you from above. Or the people that you knew and trusted to be killed before they hit the ground. Yeah, there was no point running. He grieved silently for his comrades as he took the pain. His heart stung more than his flesh. The anger built up inside. The rage filled his blood and his mind. His cover was blown. But it didn't matter. He had no life anymore. Once again, he had been betrayed by existence. It was futile. He wasn't allowed to care. But there was light at the end of the tunnel, and she stood at the exit. She didn't have to ask what he was thinking. <laughs> she knew. He'd always been waiting for someone like her. He'd given up hope that she ever existed. Now he could live again. Not every haven is as it is imagined. Some are just plain creepy. No one likes an upstart that bosses people around. It's difficult to look at Cyclops and not laugh. He's too emotionally charged, too much the control freak, and takes himself way too seriously. Plus, I mean, the way he stands makes it look like he's got a stick up his backside. And yet they stood there and listened like polite students. Colossus wouldn't worry. He could take him down if he needed, but uh, Beast never liked to be patronized. Sarcasm would only go so far. All in all, it was a good team, and they knew it. There was an understanding between them that felt right. It was like a separated family reuniting after many years of being apart. Nothing needed to be explained. No introductions needed to be done. The only thing on their minds now was, what was this place? And who put them together? It wasn't about trust, it was about understanding. Even when he heard the voice in his head, it made the whole experience that much more mind-blowing. It was gentle, almost calming. Just the sort of tone that the Pied Piper would have played for his rats. No one had called Beast a friend before, or offered him drinks from a floating tray. He didn't look like much. The wind would blow him over if he wasn't in a wheelchair. But hey, he was the boss. He had a gentle look in his eye. Probably would fail miserably as an apprentice, but this was his show. He was in control and he knew it. He didn't have to show off. Storm couldn't take much more of this. It wasn't in her rebellious nature to accept everything at face value. She was street smart and it showed. Even though this Xavier wasn't a threat, what was his game?
Xavier was never one to hide anything. He felt that honesty was the most important thing we had. He especially had to be honest with his team. What he was asking of them could possibly turn into the greatest sacrifice any one of these mutants had ever dreamed. He had to show them that they were all equal in his eyes. He respected them and their so-called abnormalities. To him, that is what made them special. He'd told the tale many times before. It was less painful now. In some ways, it even seemed like it was someone else's memory. Look, no one likes the truth. Most of the time, it's harder to fathom than a lie. All of them could relate to being a scared child hiding in the corner of a bus. It was something that none of them would ever admit. But they'd been there. The first mission with a new team is always a little nerve-wracking. One can only hope that everyone does their job. But I've been in too many situations where I've been let down. Too many promises have been made as individuals tend to overestimate their abilities. <laughs> I've even seen the biggest loudmouths turn into gun-shy cowards. But this team worked well so far. Like clockwork, they played the roles perfectly until the real trial would begin. And that's when it really counts. The bigger the enemy, the bigger they fall. That's what I've always believed. Size doesn't matter. It may be another thing to be fried in a bus, but I've had worse. But as in any group dynamic, everyone has to have a say. That's the only problem with democracy. It tends to be slow. Ask any tyrant. One leader, one command, one order. Take away protocol, and you got nothing. Storm just had to believe in herself. No one else in her past ever did. <laughs> so why should she?
was someone in the shadows that was tired of running. He'd taken all that he could take, and he was exhausted. Now it was his turn. Bobby Drake was more than just a frightened 15-year-old kid. He had a natural gift that he wouldn't accept until now. It was Bobby's shining moment. He never felt victory before, but it would end. He was reminded of the harsh reality. He was not normal. None of the X-Men were. The masses would never understand. It's easier to blindly hate than accept something different, but, and I've said this all before, there was nothing they could do. Hey, that was life. The rules have been written ages ago. Meanwhile, there was someone that understood human nature better than humans could themselves. The best way to analyze something is to become an objective outsider. To Magneto, he didn't have to become anything. He was an outsider. No matter how many times he tried to fit in as a child, he wasn't allowed to be like the rest of the kids. He was a victim of the human condition. The history of evil dictated no other path for Magneto as a boy. His fate was signed, sealed, and delivered on the day he was born. He'd grown up now. Tolerance had disappeared somewhere in his teens. Now, Magneto didn't even bother to go through the motions. He despised everyone equally, as long as they were human or against him. They were the enemy. That's the way Magneto liked it. He killed so much that it often became boring. That was something that I also understood. In a way, Magneto and I were kind of alike. <laughs> I hate to admit that, but uh, it was true. In fact, you're probably wondering who I am. Well, here's where I come in. Surprised? <laughs> Who'd you think it was? Bub.